Hi there, this is Clint again, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through the Everything Local Docker Compose quick start, which you can find right here on the landing page. So let's go right ahead and just dive on in. I'm going to go ahead and click the button. See, there's a whole bunch of stuff that is uh, going to be exposed to you here. We're going to tell you what it's all about, how to run the network, how to test the network, do all kinds of fun stuff. But I'm just going to short circuit all of that and show you the quickest way to get started. Now, one of the things that you'll need to do is make sure that you have the Docker Compose file locally. You can either get it from the guy, uh, from the repository itself or just make your own, and you'll need an environment file. <clears throat> I have already cloned the repository, so that's the choice that I made. And now I'm going to just go ahead and start up, oops, I wanted to slam this to the side, and start up my Docker Compose environment. You'll see I have a ZD desktop edge for Windows, which has no identities in it. So let's go ahead and docker compose up. Actually, let's do a down minus V first. V will destroy the volumes and anything that is there. So let's just make sure that that is totally clean before we start. It is. And let's go ahead and docker compose up. <coughs> now with the uh, 0.25.10 release, there will be a new container that shows up, and that is the docker ZD controller init container. This container's job in life is to go through and actually uh, add a couple of policies that the other quick starts can do on your behalf, but um, like when you run express install, but Docker Compose can't. So if you see that container, that's what's for. Right now what's going on is Docker Compose is waiting, a bunch of routers are waiting for uh, the controller to come online. The controller needs an entire PKI to be generated, which takes a fair bit of time. And then it'll go through and it will create this very complicated little Docker network. Uh, let me open this in a new tab so I can make it bigger and you can see it in its full glory. You can see we're going to make an edge router, a WebSocket edge router, which we can disregard for now, but that will come into play at a later time in life. We have two private networks, a blue network and a red network. We're going to have a fabric router in the middle of those two, and then we'll have a private blue router and a private red router, and we'll get this web test blue all for free which is a container that is deployed as well. So if I am able to look at my screens now and you'll see my Docker Compose environment is up, I'm going to head and make a brand new one down below. By the way, you'll notice I'm running Windows Subsystem for Linux. If you are running Windows Subsystem for Linux, this can also work for you. Um, you may have to change the way Windows Subsystem for Linux works though. Um, the routing needs to be set accordingly so that your traffic lands at your local environment, not inside of the virtual machine. Anyway, let's get back to it. Let's docker exec minus IT into the docker ZD controller bash. And once we're in here, we can run a ZD login to log into ZD. Now we can do a ZD edge router, uh, sorry, a ZD edge list edge routers. And we'll see the edge routers that we have available to us. So uh, that's fantastic. We could also do a ZD fabric list links with an S and we'll see the links between all those routers. So we have a fully formed overlay network now that is represented by this diagram right here. Well, what we want to do is we want to get at this web test blue in this example. So we've already start, we've already set up our entire environment. That was that fast, but we're going to actually go through and actually connect to this web test blue. So if I do a curl to web test blue on port 8000, you'll see I get the Docker whale. This is a container that comes with the Docker Compose environment for use to build sample applications. We've recently built a sample. If you go out to the OpenZD page and you find the quick starts, <clears throat> you can find the getting started with services guide. Let me put this back to normal size so you can see what I'm doing. And then we have not created the Zero Trust application access page yet, but we have created the checkout host access quick start. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can go ahead and read through this, pause the video, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to access that web server that we just did from Docker Compose outside of ZD or outside of Docker using ZD. Now we don't need two edge routers. I have two in this diagram, but uh, you, you could only use one if you wanted to only use one. That certainly is fine. But basically what we'll do is we'll use a regular web client Go through our Docker Compose network, come out the other side using a tunneling application. In this case, it'll be a router, and then hit that web server. 
If you want to just read this and then skip down to below, you can do that. I'm going to use the ZDCLI. You'll see that I have not uh, done this exercise with the Zach console as of this video, but hopefully that'll be coming soon. So let's just go right ahead and run these exact commands that we have already laid out inside of this quick start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make these two things smaller so that we can see everything on the screen, or at least enough. Now, hopefully that'll be enough. All right, so the first thing we need to do is ZD login. You can either run ZD edge login as shown, or you can run, if you're inside of the container, ZD login. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make a identity. If you, if this is the first time starting your Docker container, uh, it might be worthwhile for you to take a look at the ZD edge controller YAML file. Inside here are a couple of settings, one of which is your session timeout. I am uh, oftentimes away, so I will set that to 600 minutes. And then the other one is your timeout for your tokens. And uh, those are the things which are used to enroll your identities. I will often set those from five minutes to 600 minutes as well. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and Docker compose down just to stop uh, Docker compose that we're not in the right directory. We have to actually, I started it without a daemon, so I can just control C. Let's go back up here and control C. We'll wait for this to stop. Um, once this is done stopping, I'm just going to turn it right back on again. You do need to restart the controller at this time for a change to take effect. Uh, but this doesn't take too terribly long to shut down and then just turn back on again. So that's what we're going to do. Just waiting for this ZD controller to shut down. There it goes. And now you can do up again. And now I can Docker exec back into Docker ZD controller at bash. And now if I edit this controller file, you'll see I still have 600 minutes. Great. So now I can uh, issue this command where I can create the HTTP client identity. So this is creating a token. That token will be used by my Windows um, desktop edge for Windows, which is right here. So let's go right ahead and do that now. I can exit the container. I can do a Docker copy on uh, Docker ZD controller uh, underscore one slash open ZD slash HTTP dot client dot JWT. I'm going to put it into my mounted directory into a temp folder. Now I should be able to come over to here and type c colon temp uh, http .client .jwt. When I do that, you'll see I have no services. You see some stuff flash by over here. Now we have an enrolled identity. It has no services, which is exactly what we would expect. We just created and enrolled that identity. So now what we need to do is we need to create an identity for the HTTP server. But in this example, you don't need to do that because we'll be using the edge router that is deployed into the, uh, where would my diagram go? I don't know where my diagram is, right here. We'll be using this edge router, which is deployed into the blue network instead. This will represent our tunneling application. So we don't need to create the HTTP server identity. Uh, we do need to start creating the configs though. So the first config we'll make is the intercept config. Uh, let's go back into Docker. <clears throat> let's log in, make sure we're logged in, and we'll create a config. So a service is, is uh, generally speaking, going to be of zero to two configurations, configs. The first config will be the intercept config, which I'm creating right now. The second config will be the host config. And as of the time of this video, a happy Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. A discourse user has happily explained to me that I have a bug. So let's go right ahead and find all the way over to port 80. And we need to change this to port 8000. Okay, let's just review, make sure. We also have to edit this. So this is the address that we want the traffic to go to. So this will be web test blue on port 8000. So what we have done is we have um, configured the, the far side, the hosting side, the bind side, and not quite correctly. Uh, I've got a quote here. All right. <clears throat> so now I've created the two configurations. 
I really wish that didn't work that way. Now I need to make the service. So I can go ahead and create that service. It's going to be called uh, HTTP.Service. It's going to use the two configs, HTTP.Intercept and HTTP.HostV1. Go ahead and make that. And now we have to authorize our services. In this case, this is the dial policy. So I'm going to allow any identity which has the attribute of HTTP clients to dial the service named HTTP.Service. Now when I do that, in a few seconds, my client should recognize that it has a new service. So let's uh, sit here and wait. We didn't have to wait for long. We have one new service, HTTP.ZD. Also note, HTTP.ZD, not a top-level domain. And now we can create the bind policy. The home key brings me to the home of the page, and I have to keep scrolling down. <laughs> so let's do this. We'll copy this and paste that here. And we do have to change the identity role. Now, in this case, uh, since I've already run this, I know I can simply type ZD private blue. This is the name of the private edge router, which we have enabled tunneling on, and this will be our bind router. Let's go ahead and do that. Once all that's done, uh, I don't need to enroll because I already did the enrollment. Um, oh, you'll also see created terminator. The router ZD private blue noticed that it created a terminator. I don't have to do this ZD enroll because I did that using my ZD desktop edge for Windows. I don't need to enroll the server or the client. The server's already enrolled as part of bringing it up in Docker Compose. So now I should be able to just issue a curl to HTTP.ZD. One piece of note I will tell you again, I'm using <coughs> WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. Um, if you find this doesn't work, you may have to edit your Etsy uh, resolve.conf if, again, you're in Windows. sudo vi helps. You'll see I was using something different. I uh, just want to make sure that, that was correct. So now I should be able to do curl http.zd and I get the Docker whale, just like that. Again, note, .zd doesn't actually exist. It's not a valid top-level domain. If I were to come back to my browser window, paste that into here, you can see it works in my browser now too. And for the piece de resistance, if I turn off my tunneling agent, which is the CD desktop edge for Windows, and then issue the same curl, you can see there is no HTTP.ZD. It does not resolve. I turn this thing back on again, wait for it to cook, issue the same curl again, and well, I know it'll work. Hang on, come on. There it is. Just had to wait a second. And there you go. There's a cool little video showing you how to bring up an entire Docker Compose environment, how to add your first service in that Docker Compose environment, how to test it. In this case, I use the ZD Desktop Edge for Windows, but it would work on Mac or Linux. Similarly, not quite exactly the same. They don't quite look the same yet. And that's this video. Um, see us around Discourse if you have any questions. And uh, like and subscribe. I haven't ever said that on one of these channels, but I'll do it right now. And that's this video. All right.